going to Heartwood Presbyterian Church. <laughs> church this morning. We're glad you're all here, whether you're here with us in person or whether you're joining us online. We definitely want you to know that you're welcome this morning. Our annual congregational meeting will be today, live and in person. Immediately following this worship service, we'll be electing elders, deacons, and reviewing the 2021 budget, and the congregation will approve the pastor's terms of call. Uh, we also have uh, some bulletin inserts for you to read through. There's a, an announcement in there from the uh, Mission and Outreach Committee concerning the food pantry and the Micah ministry. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 56, verses 1, 3, and 4. Be gracious to me, O God. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God, I trust, I will not be afraid. And now I'd like to invite all of you to join me as we all say together out loud, what can mere mortals do to me? Please pray along silently with me now as I pray our prayer of adoration. Everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Give us purity of heart and strength of purpose, that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will. No weakness keep us from doing it, that in your light we may see light clearly, and in your service find perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite you to all join me as we respond together out loud Say, Lord, we adore you. And now, over to Laura for our first hymn. Good morning. Our opening hymn is Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. And I'm reminded of the parable in the Bible that Jesus tells when he talks about the shepherd who has 99 sheep, but one of them went astray. God will always come looking for us. Let us also look for him.
to confession this morning is from 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. If you do sin, Jesus Christ always does the right thing. He will speak to the Father for us. Christ is the sacrifice that takes away our sins and the sins of all the world's people. Please pray along silently with me now as I pray our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we entrust to you our confession of sin. We are easily discouraged when our good intentions do not make things better. Portents of danger arise around us, and we doubt the future you have promised. We close our eyes to signs of the future and live for the moment. God, in Christ, forgive our apathy to your will and make us whole again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'd like to invite you to join me as we all say together out loud, Lord, have mercy on us. Our assurance of pardon comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. But we should always give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved of the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation, through sanctification, by the Spirit and faith in the truth. It was for this that he called you through our gospel, that you may gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our hymn is Precious Lord, Take My Hand. It's time for our moment with children and youth. Our moment today comes from the Heritage Builders, Bible Stories for Preschoolers, Family Night Tool Chest, the Old Testament, Chapter 7, Joshua. Our theme for today is The Walls Came Down at Jericho Town. Joshua lived just before the time of Ruth, who we're going to be learning more about today. Joshua led the children of Israel into the Promised Land. Joshua is most famous as the person who God utilized to capture the town of Jericho. God told Joshua and the children of Israel to walk around Jericho seven times and blow their horns and give a mighty shout. And when they did that, God knocked the walls of Jericho down and the children of Israel were able to capture it. Now, as I was preparing this, I started thinking, wow, wouldn't it be great once the coronavirus is over and we're up there that we can have all the kids walk around the sanctuary making as much noise as they possibly could just to kind of do a little reenactment, right? I mean, wouldn't that be great? Well, okay, maybe, maybe not the noise part, but they can at least walk around the sanctuary, I think. 
But for now, you just kind of have to imagine this happening. Because you see, we can learn a lot from this story. One thing is that sometimes we face things that might seem impossible. But God can give us the strength to overcome those things. Just like God knocked down the walls of Jericho for the children of Israel. Because of God, the walls came down a Jericho town. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember when we face things that seem impossible in our lives, we must turn to you for help. Because of you, the walls came down in Jericho town. And the walls in our lives can come down too. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please continue to pray along with me as I pray our prayer for illumination? Guide us, O oh God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, and in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So today we're going to continue our sermon series on the book of Ruth, which we're calling Ruth, an account of tragedy and triumph. The book of Ruth begins with terrible tragedy and loss, and it ends with a triumphant hope that points to eternity. In Ruth, we see God provide for people who have no one else to protect them or provide for them. No one else to protect them from an extremely dangerous world. We see God comforting people in the middle of tragedy and loss and give them hope. But in Ruth, we also see that God is in charge and God has a plan. Not just a plan for the people mentioned in the book of Ruth, but a plan which impacts, reaches down through time and across space to us today and beyond, into eternity. As we see God taking care of people who he utilizes to be the ancestors of his son, Jesus Christ, whose birth we just celebrated a few weeks ago. In today's passage, we witness a conversation between Naomi and her daughters, daughters-in-law, excuse me, Orpah and Ruth. And we see strong wills, strong emotions, and a strong God who provides for those he cares about and calls to follow him. And so now, listen to the word of the Lord. Her Old Testament reading is from Ruth chapter 1, verses 8 to 17. Naomi said to them, Each of you, Go back to your mother's house, and may the Lord show kindness to you, as you have shown to the dead and to me. May the Lord grant each of you rest in the house of a new husband. And she kissed them, and they wept loudly. And they said to her, We insist upon returning with you to your people. But Naomi replied, Return home, my daughters. Why do you want to go with me? Am I able to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. Go on, for I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me to have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you be willing to wait for them to grow up? Would you restrain yourselves from remarrying? No, my daughters. My life is much too bitter for you to share, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. And again, they wept loudly, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her, and Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Follow your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, Do not plead with me to abandon you, or to return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there be buried as well. And may the Lord punish me and do so very severely if anything but death separates you and me. A six-year-old girl in Florida was called a hero last year by saving her mother's life. Esperanza Lopez's mother, Angela, fell off of a ladder onto her back and was unable to get up. Esperanza saw it happen, and she tried to find somebody to help, but no one else was around. She 
came back to her mom and said, don't worry, mommy, I'll call 911. You see, Angela has a pre-existing condition, and so she taught Esperanza how to dial 911 if it became necessary. Esperanza calmly and clearly told the dispatcher that her mommy had fallen off of a ladder and could not move and didn't know why. Angela said that when she heard the sirens at her door, she cried tears of joy. She went on to say that Esperanza was her hero. The little girl's love for her mother and her decisive action possibly saved her mother's life. And this is the same kind of love and decisive action that we see Ruth exhibit when she says, your God will be my God. This would be a good time for you to turn your attention to your sermon notes. First, we're going to see a tearful goodbye. Next, we'll hear the logic of parting. And finally, Ruth commits herself to follow Naomi and God. Our theme for today is that God utilizes his followers to call others to follow him. But first, a tearful goodbye. Now, if you remember from last week, Naomi has heard that God has paid attention to his people and provided food for them. The famine that brought Naomi and her family to Moab is now over. But sadly, her husband and both of her sons died in Moab. She was in despair in Moab, and her only hope was to return home to Bethlehem, Ephratah, in the region of Judah, in the land of Israel. True, she still had her beloved daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth, but keeping them and her household only drained away their opportunities to remarry and have children by remaining widows with their widowed mother-in-law. Naomi. And so Naomi tells her daughters to return to their mother's house so that their families could arrange another marriage for each of them. Now, we've got to understand that this was standard practice in this time and this culture for marriages to be arranged. But Naomi also blesses her daughters-in-law. She asks the Lord to be kind to them and bless them with a good future because they had been kind to her and to her late sons. Like most of us, we really appreciate it when people are kind to us, but we appreciate it even more when they're kind to our kids, right? Now, I think that what we see here is a unique relationship. Naomi must have been an exceptionally kind person herself. And I think she and her husband treated each other with kindness. And their sons followed that example. Orpha and Ruth were either naturally kind themselves or they responded to the kind treatment that they received from their husbands and their mother-in-law with kindness of their own. Well, then, Ruth kissed them, or excuse me, Naomi kissed her daughters-in-law, and they all wept loudly. The tragedy of Naomi's loss of her sons and Orpah and Ruth losing their husbands was now compounded by their upcoming loss of each other, the breaking apart of their little family. It truly is catastrophic and heartbreaking. It's too much to bear. And so Orpah and Ruth refuse to bear it. They say that they will stay with Naomi. They will keep their little family together. They're acting on raw emotion, and they vow to return with Naomi. And indeed, this is part of God utilizing his followers to call others to follow him. But Naomi knows what is best, and so she explains the logic of the parting. Now, in this time and in this culture, it was customary that when a man died without having children, that his brother was to take the man's widow as his own wife and produce, on behalf of the deceased man, a male heir to carry on 
the deceased man's family name, to inherit his property, and to care for his widow, who in this case would be the son of the mother. But Ruth and Orpah's deceased husbands had no other brothers. Naomi is also a widow. She did not remarry. Besides, Naomi says, even if she had a son nine months from the moment they're speaking to each other, her widowed daughters-in-law would have to wait years for that son to come of age and fulfill the cultural custom. Truly, the most logical thing was for Orpah and Ruth to return to their families of origin and arrange other marriages for themselves with men who would be closer to their own ages. Men who could protect them and provide for them. Men who could give them companionship and the possibility of children, as was customary in this time and in this culture, both in Moab and in the land of Israel. And then, in that moment, Naomi saw her own logic, and Naomi succumbed to despair. I'm sure that after the death of Naomi's family, she had her good days and her bad days. I'm sure her daughters-in-law were a source of strength and comfort to her after the loss of her husband and both of her sons. But in this moment, the loss was too much to bear. She slips into the pit of despair and says that even the hand of God had turned against her. But the hand of God had not turned against her, as we'll see in just a moment and in the weeks to come, because God utilizes his followers cause others to follow him. Well, now we see that Ruth commits herself to Naomi and to God. Orpah sees the logic, and as they all continue to weep, Orpah kisses her mother-in-law goodbye and sets off for her parents' home. One scholar says that Orpah made the sound and reasonable choice, and the account does not negatively judge Orpah for what she did. But Ruth did not go. Naomi makes one last argument. She says, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her parents' home. Follow her. But Ruth says, no. Ruth says, do not plead with me to abandon you or return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. And may the Lord punish me and do so very severely if anything but death separates you from me. Ruth is making a radical commitment. She's turning her back on her culture, her language, her gods, her family. Ruth stands alone. Naomi hasn't invited her to come along. The account doesn't even say that God had called her to do so. More about that in a moment. So she has no apparent hope of family or fortune in Bethlehem, Ephratah, in the land of Judah, in the country of Israel. Who knows? Maybe she has nothing keeping her in Moab, no other family or opportunities. Who knows? But I think that somehow, some way, God had called her to follow him before. And it is that relationship with the Holy One of Israel that has given her the courage and the motivation to do this thing. I think that God started working in her life prior to this moment, and that he's been working to mold Ruth into a person that lives out the loving kindness that characterizes God himself. But for sure, if she was not a follower of the Holy One of Israel before, she has just made that commitment in verse 16 to follow him now. I also think that God used Naomi and or Malon and Chilean to do this. I think Ruth saw how they lived, how they treated her, how they worshiped their God, the Holy One of Israel, and maybe even invited Ruth to worship him along with them. And I think that witness 
showed Ruth that she too wanted to claim this God as her own God. Well, Naomi is still so numb from grief, loss, and despair that she doesn't really respond. She doesn't accept Ruth's offer. There is no tearful hug. There's no celebration. But God will restore Naomi. Just you wait and see. I think that God utilizes us in the same way today. That he may have utilized Naomi and or Malone and Chilean in Ruth's life so long ago. God calls us to invite others to worship him. God calls us to treat others with his love. But God also calls us to intentionally speak of him and the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, for us and for them. I also think that when this current coronavirus crisis finally does end, that we're, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be looking for God and looking for a church. We, as followers of Jesus and members of Heartwood Church, need to be ready. Ready to be utilized by the Holy Spirit to make that invitation. To say, Jesus loves you and he died to save you. And we love you too. Come to church with us and hear more. We have a great little church, right? Because you see, God utilizes his followers to call others to follow him. Would you please join me in prayer? Father God, utilize us to touch the lives of another person like you utilize Naomi and Malone and Chilean. Utilize us to be the voice of your Holy Spirit for someone to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is Anywhere with Jesus.
Now it is time for our season of prayer. Would you please pray along silently with me? Father God, do not allow us to abandon you and not follow you. No. For wherever you call us to go, give us strength to say, I will go. And wherever you call us to live, give us courage to say, I will live. Lord God, let your people be our people. For you were and are and forever will be God. You sent your son to die for us, and one day we too will all die and be buried. But we know that if we follow you and him, we will live for eternity, and nothing will separate us from your love. Lord, we continue to pray for all the members of our military, serving both here at home and abroad. We pray too for our first responders, for our law enforcement officers, and our fire and rescue workers, that you will protect them and keep them safe. Give them wisdom and strength to do their jobs well and successfully. Lord, as we continue to face the coronavirus, we pray that you will protect us from that disease, comfort and heal those who suffer from the virus, and protect those who do not have the virus. Lord, please let our vaccines soon be readily available and effective so that we can eradicate the plague of the coronavirus from our lives once and for all. Lord, as our thoughts turn closer to home, we lift up to you all of those who are on our prayer list in need of prayer. We lift up the family of Anderson Johnston, the father of Amy Ratliff. We lift up Andy and Diane. We pray for Elaine and we pray for Kathleen. We lift up to you Marilyn and Michelle. We pray for Rick and for Sue. Lord, please heal them and comfort them and draw them close to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And I'd like to invite you to take a moment now and lift up your silent prayers to the Lord. please pray along silently as I pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I would invite you to join me as we all say together out loud, Lord, hear our prayer. Our affirmation of faith this morning is, is an excerpt from the Heidelberg Catechism. I am not my own, but belong, body and soul, in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all of my sins with his precious blood, and set me free from the tyranny of the devil, he also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation, because I belong to him. Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. 
Now I'd invite you to join me as we respond to our affirmation of faith, as we all say together, Lord, we affirm our faith in you. In light of all of the donations and gifts that many of us have given to the church over this last week, we now pray our prayer of dedication. O oh God, with grateful hearts, we present these gifts and ourselves with a prayer that our offering might be used to the glory of God and for the work of God's kingdom on earth. In the name of our Lord, we pray. Amen. Please join me now as we all respond together out loud. Lord, we dedicate our gifts to your kingdom. Our closing hymn is The Footsteps of Jesus. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.